Oh, hello there, how's it going? I am UAM Loki, and I am gonna beat RuneScape. Run. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. YouTube says if I don't make jokes, then you won't like and subscribe. But yeah, so we're gonna work on maxing. We're also gonna work on like 20 other things at the same time. I'll put them on screen here, and if you want to see that, feel free to pause. Otherwise, let's get into the video. <laughs> Literally 13 HP every single fucking raid. We cut to the absolute bare bone fucking resources left. This is 168 KC for the back to back. I got to get properly aligned with the purple light that we're about to get. Oh shit. The back to back purple. Oh shit. It's on the stream no less. The back to back stream purple. This is my first ever back to back stream purple in my entire RuneScape career. I've never had this happen before. So I guess without further ado, we got 54,000 points. Let's go ahead and open up 168 KC. Can we get the ancestral hat? <laughs> the dexterous prayer scroll that is a nice juicy 32 mil so you know what we will have to take it um yeah three arcanes and now one dex on this little sub grind here i'm definitely gonna go drop that to the bond alt and take some free gp all right so decided to go to the gym after that last one but i am back now feeling fucking amazing as always i love the gym anyway here's the dexterous prayer scroll dropping over to the bond alt as you do on a uim and and I feel like I probably mentioned this a few times at this point, but between the decks and the arcane, the average price we should expect to see on any given scroll is the average value of the scrolls. So if you add them up and divide by two, that's 34 mil. So 17 mil each on average is what we should expect to get per prayer scroll, which is actually pretty good considering that's a common item. Honestly, like it's pretty much the same as Tombs of a Masket because the Fang is what? Fang is fucking under 30 mil now. And the Light Bearer, yeah, this is kind of funny. It's like the equivalent of of the arcane and the decks the light bearer and the fang so yeah it's kind of funny it's kind of equalized now i guess anyway yeah so here's for the back three back can we get it no never lucky literally never lucky 169 kc for the sapphires and rainers nice that's pretty good man all right this is my fastest pace ever we just finished the second floor at 1745 so if we get like a clean rest of the raid no hiccups then we might get the grandmaster speedrun time but i'm already pretty nervous and we're not even halfway through the raid so i'm just gonna probably stop talking for the rest of it to be honest oh my god this is a pretty fast vasa please just get a big hit here we need it we need it we need it we kind of need it Damn it, that would have been a two crystal Vasa. All right, third floor completion at 2745. So we've got like 11 minutes, a little under 11 minutes to do Ulm, which is like, that's gotta be a pretty tight Ulm, but it's possible. We're gonna need to hit a lot of Dragon Warhammer specs to make this like even more possible. We missed the first one, hit the second one, nice, okay, perfect. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be getting it. We need to finish this in like less than two minutes and we're only on the second to last phase. Unfortunately, we just didn't hit many Dragon Warhammers. So we got a lot of RNG this run, just not quite enough it's definitely possible though all right there it is a 39 51 so a minute and 21 seconds short or long or however you want to phrase that i am <laughs> i am pretty nervous man every time i go for that every time we get on a good pace it just makes me so nervous but our execution was good there we just didn't get the rng and that is a uh, new pb of course 39 51 at 170 kc Ooh, the double gem drop i don't think we've gotten one of those yet on this grind so i will definitely take Take that man for reference that is about twenty-seven thousand crafting xp and when we craft these it's gonna be like i'm pretty sure it's like over 200k crafting xp an hour which is like three times as good as the next best method that just being like super glass charter ships so additionally that wasn't even a full loot potential because we died at metadile so we would have gotten like probably like thirty-five thousand crafting xp banks right there if we didn't die so yeah that's just like very very good i like that all right so i've been thinking about this for a while i think what we're gonna go ahead and do now here is we're just going to pull the dragon hunter lance out of hespori if my calculations are correct it's roughly a 30 percent increase dps on the old melee hand uh at the cost of obviously one inventory spot so it should be fine the raids are consistent enough as it is with just the fang but this should help us get these speed run attempts going a little more consistently and then yeah we'll just see how this feels if it ends up being like not enough inventory we can just throw it in the looting bag and that's fine and if we end up liking it then we can keep it 
right? And speaking of the Dragon Hunter Lance, I, th I think I might have mentioned this before, I kind of forget, but we're probably going to end up actually dropping this thing pretty soon once we complete maybe like this speed run and like maybe a Vorkath speed run. Um, <laughs> with the Fang and the Rapier, there's really no reason to have the Lance anymore. It's great for speed runs, but I mean, it's crashed a lot in value because the Fang is just so versatile and exceeds at places where the Lance also exceeds. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that to be honest, but for now we're just going to uh, use it. So let's do that. This is going to feel so good. Our first time doing four to one in like, I don't know, a long ass time. <laughs> it's so much more damage. So like, yeah, this is just going to be straight up dopamine. We didn't use any fucking bruise the entire first phase because we just cleared it so fast. So the fact that we have less bruise here is really not even going to matter. The only thing is that during Mudadial, if having one less brew there, I feel like that is going to matter. So as long as we can make it to Ulm, we're, we're going to be in a pretty good situation no matter what it feels like. That is a raid, 175kc, satisfying number there. One quarter of 700 if I'm not mistaken. Hey, some dragon arrows, the salt pater. I guess that's all right. There's no way this clip is going to make it into the video. Video, but fucking idiots don't even know how to get me because they're over there. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> what? Wait, I guess, oh, I guess he must have been trapped over there and then I untrapped him. So I guess I'm just the idiot after all. All right, so I remember when I first started solo challenge modes, there's a couple rooms that I initially found pretty intimidating. One of them is vanguards. You pretty much never do vanguards in teams unless like the entire team really knows what they're doing. But generally it's just uh, not really worth it because if one guy messes it up, it just resets the whole room and it's a nightmare. But since in challenge mode, you have to learn how to do every room because every room is in the raid that means we had to learn how to do vanguards and let me tell you after becoming like extremely comfortable with vanguards it's actually the best room by far it's guaranteed to give at least one overload at least three brews up to six brews and generally a couple prayer potions too on this particular run you're watching right now i basically took like 10 damage on the entire vanguards and so i'm just gonna share a couple tips on how to do that because once you can do that then you can literally use no supplies on the entire raid because the supplies you get from this room will carry you for the rest of the raid minus the stamina's of course because those are the only things that you absolutely need to have but yeah so i'm not sure if this is like the absolute best guide ever but it's just like the things that i've used to help me get zero damage vanguards we'll start off with the easy stuff you can safe spot the melee anywhere in the room you can be in one of three spots and there are three safe spots so that one's pretty easy a really important strategy is to know your timings i know that with all my five tick weapons that if i'm tick perfect I can do five attacks per cycle. So what I'll often do is something like, you know, four mage attacks on the meleeer. And then what I'll generally do is quickly switch into my range gear, let off one Tebow on the major, because I know that he's about to go under. And if I can land that Tebow right as he's about to go under, he actually won't attack me with a mage attack. And if I just attack the major with one to two Tebows per cycle, like you're just not going to take any damage because he's not going to be able to hit you. And you're going to get a ton of damage out of the Tebow. Obviously, if you have like a Bofa instead of a Tebow, it's not as effective, but but it's still always going to be guaranteed free damage on the major, which is kind of the hardest one to deal with, which finally brings us to the ranger. The ranger is probably the most unique out of all the guys in the room. He's basically stationary. and If you walk under him, he just won't be able to get you. So if you're ever in a pinch and the ranger is on you, you can just go under the ranger. He won't be able to get you and you're pretty much safe. You can deal with whatever other guy is on you and just kind of ignore the ranger. Right as the ranger comes up, there's like a three or four game tick window where he won't be able to attack. So you can basically just like follow the ranger around the room attack him once walk under him and then assess your circumstances see if the major needs to be attacked or the melee needs to be attacked if you're really trying to go without taking any damage you know you can just get that one attack per cycle it's pretty slow but that's definitely helped me save a bunch of runs and yeah i mean i feel like i've already been talking about this for like five minutes now so i'll probably stop but one last little like sort of super cheesy method you can do to just sort of brute force it is that when they're transitioning around the room and you walk under them they'll deal trample damage i think it like gets up to a six but but don't quote me on that. You can actually redemption that. It'll get you up to like, you know, 25 HP or whatever. And I'm pretty sure their max hit is like 21. So if you hypothetically had five HP and no bruise, you could still do the room just using the redemption cheese method. You'd probably need a prayer enhance for that to work. Uh, but yeah, with a prayer enhance, you could get like a thousand HP over the course of the five minutes that it takes to wear off. So anyway, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff, but like, I don't know why it takes so long to explain things. And I don't want this entire video to just be a Vanguard's video. So my guess is that probably like 30% of you already clicked off so I guess I'm gonna try and get back into the purples and maybe we'll get one of those soon what the fuck what <laughs> wait 
I'm like 100% sure I was standing in a safe spot. Is that not a safe spot? In all of my 170 whatever raids, he has never once meleeed me in that spot. That was fucking weird. I gotta go back and look at the clip. Hold on. Um, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the spot. That was fucking weird. I guess that's not a safe spot. I'll have to remember that from now on, except I don't think that'll ever happen again because it's never happened to me before. I don't know what the hell just happened. I don't know. Yeah, let's uh keep going, I guess. All right, I decided to log out after the last raid and I'm logging back in and we've got a game update. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick and it looks like a hey, bounty under his back that's pretty cool nice that's fun okay let's go back to it. oh dude god damn it one of my home worlds is 319 i basically only use 319 and now it's the bounty hunter world so it's got a ton of people in it <laughs> which means we're losing so many ticks look at this look at our tick tracker this world used to be a target world and now it's the bounty hunter world i'm literally gonna have to remove this from our favorite world list because it's just there's just too many people it's not going to be as responsive yeah we're getting 80 percent good ticks that's not very good at all also purdue used to be right here on the target world so i could if i needed like a ring or a fucking you know whatever Purdue sells, I could just come to here, but now I have to fucking walk all the way over here. I was going to buy some more Tinea legs for this clue step, but yeah, this <laughs> bounty hunter update is objectively bad for me, so I'm going to, uh, I didn't vote for this shit, get it out of here. Also, I just remembered that I had a dream last night where I lost all 20,000 doses of stamina and 6,000 doses of super combat. <laughs> I just remembered that. I completely forgot that I had that dream, and then I looked down, and I was like, oh shit, they're there, and I didn't really like that dream, but pretty common for UAMs to have horrible nightmares every Every night god damn it fucking resource wilderness area uh that's gonna be a drop even though that's the last step of the clue all right so now i'm actually going to be editing the next video uh which means i'm probably gonna go train some hunter at maniacal monkeys which means i need to death bank which means i need to fucking like put all of this stuff into my inventory which is very full enough to hold all of this stuff so i guess let's uh get started on doing this it's probably gonna take me like 20 minutes honestly Alrighty, guys uh it looks like we we do have exactly the right amount of inventory which is great however i am going to be doing something that i never really thought i'd do uh we've got the brimstone ring here and the spectral spirit shield i'm pretty sure at this point on the account both of these items are just either outclassed or completely unnecessary so we've already got the ring of suffering and the light bear we don't need a brimstone ring anymore even though that was our main ring for a long time so i'm just going to take this opportunity where our shit is all super full to drop that and then <laughs> uh so again guess we'll go ahead and pick it up on the alt right now the deed has been done we can always get another one if we like desperately need it but i don't see that happening um this spectral i'm a little bit attached to i kind of wish that i didn't have to drop it i mean i don't have to drop it i'm just choosing to drop it to clear up inventory space it's worth 59 mil it's a 1.2 mil alc i think i'm just going to drop it it's a little sad to see it go but also it's kind of a huge weight off the shoulders because i've never used it i'm never planning to use it and there's nowhere to to even use it aside from like maybe Nex and Cerberus but I asked some people and they said that it's not even worth bringing to Nex um so the alt is going to pick it up I can't believe I'm doing this but there we go the spectral is officially gone oh that feels both good and bad at the same time. Plus, I guess we will always have the collection log spectral thing unlocked regardless. And all of you guys who have been watching the series will know that I have had one. So that's enough of a flex for me to be happy with. I suppose we'll go ahead and show me just dumping these two things onto the GE. So there's the spectral. UAM Loki signed spectral. UAM Loki signed brimstone ring. Never before traded. 58 mil and three mil so a nice juicy 60 mil there also <laughs> one more thing uh, a super lame statistic that no one really cares about except for me is my overall bank value so this will be the highest that it's ever been i've never had all of my stuff banked like this uh i don't think in a long time maybe i probably have i'm just not remembering but anyway let's see what it's worth it's worth 4.4 bill uh and yeah now that's 60 mil lower because we just got rid of 60 mil on the account so it would be 60 mil higher and that would feel even better but this number doesn't even include all of our like Missouri and ancestral and third age stored in the poh so it's probably closer to like i don't know maybe five bill or something if we include all the items on the account but yeah so i just wanted to check in with that personally and now we checked in with it so we can actually start hunting all right uh what's up guys i've basically just been editing for the last like 10 hours straight uh looks like we got a little under 700 000 hunter xp so that's a pretty good haul for just today um we are 150k from 98 hunter and we'll definitely be 
you get an answer next time we go to edit to video. Can you believe it's been eight minutes since the last loot that I showed you on a series where I'm supposed to be getting loots? Man, I really do like to talk too much. So someone recently mentioned this to me on stream. I'm going to try it out here. He said that you can Tumican Shadow into Tebow, the guy without taking any damage. Yeah, okay, that's fucking sick. That substantially increases our damage here. The reason that works is because I guess the Tumican Shadow projectile speed is so slow that by the time it finally reaches him, I'm already ready there with the Tebow. Okay, it didn't work that time. I took a 53, but um, so I just have to be more careful with it, I guess, but maybe it only works on certain spots. But if we ever are on like a speed run pace, I guess I'll probably want to be using that. All right, that was a pretty solid raid. Two and a half minutes slower than the Grandmaster speed run time. 184 KC, and we're pulling ourselves a purple. You'll love to see it. Um, yeah, I guess let's go ahead and open it up. A dexterous prayer scroll. So I think we're at two dex, three arcane, and a twisted bow for our items on this little grind here. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, can I really complain ever again having gotten a dupe Tebow? I don't know. I guess that's it for you guys to decide. I kind of just want to get this hat because that would be super cool, but I'm not going to complain about a 32 mil drop, I guess. So I'm actually going to drop trade this dex in the LMS place. Oof, this guy was standing here, he was making me nervous, but I don't think he noticed. Successfully transferred. 31 mil. Alright, if we can get the back-to-back -back here, then that'll be a back-to-back, back-to-back. So can we get the back-to-back, back-to-back? Aw, oh, goddammit, no back-to-back, back-to-back. Um, hey, look at that. Dynamite, Rune Arrow Elite Clue. Alright, there is the Elite Caskets. What do we get? Oh yeah. All right, another raid completed here. No purple, 186 KC. The Torstal and the Lantanime, though. That's pretty nice. Also, 186 KC, 186,000. The number is my favorite number. So I believe that's like the speed of light in miles per hour or something yeah miles per second not miles per hour i don't know what i was thinking but here it is um and i remember when i learned that when i was like 10 or whatever i was like dang i don't know why but i just love the way that that sounds and so ever since then as i'm sure many of you can attest you had an experience when you were young and it shaped your mind in a way that continues to be a thing as an adult and that's just one of my things so i don't think i've ever had a sub nine minute floor one so we were definitely on pb pace here which is also so, Grandmaster speedrun task pace. It sucks when thieving is the room that fucks you over. Yeah, thieving is just pure RNG, so it kind of sucks to lose to thieving if we lose the run. That's, I guess that's fine, you know, but like obviously you don't want to lose the run, so. Knees weak, arms are heavy. 17 minutes on the timer already. All right, I genuinely think the right thing to do here is to go in without prepping. Uh, I don't know, fucking man. We really need like two restores, only have one. So we're gonna have to spend like a whole minute prepping. It just might not be the run, honestly. Do I go for it? Do I fucking go for it, man. I think we're just gonna fucking go for it, dude. I can just flick the entire raid and then it should be fine, I guess. It's gonna be pretty sweaty, but I'm just gonna go for it. We need to go into Ulm at sub 28 minutes for this to work. So <laughs> I guess we're fucking pulling the trigger, man. Here we go. I don't think I've ever actually done a challenge mode raid with this little supply, so this should be interesting. Dude, I had an extremely scuffed phase one. I used three out of our four brews on phase one, so <laughs> the run was kind of fucked from the start, but we managed to make one brew last for like one and a half phases which is good but now we're out of bruise we're not even overloaded at the moment i'm gonna have to take zero damage for the rest of the raid to even win and because of that our dps is just gonna be so low that we're not gonna be able to complete the raid the next minute but this is my first ever no prep cm so i guess that's a fun accomplishment wow I was like, hey, there's a nature impling. May as well catch it because there's like a one in 50 chance for a hard clue. And that would be like a zero time hard clue. So may as well go for it. And with them, we just got it. So <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we're going to go do this hard clue. And it's a wilderness step. So that's a big sag. Whoa, that ray was fast. Uh, 3942. So just about a minute slower than the GM time. There's no way that's possible, dude. That was just like a random ass raid. That was really weird. Um, anyway, I guess no purple. Irrit soul runes, beautiful. The entire raid was like perfect except for the three minute tecton to start if that was like a 130 tecton we would have just gotten the time dang it's all about the tecton man also i guess this is probably about i don't know the fifth soul rune drop that we've gotten on this grind so normally i'll like show when we mass charge up the staff with like 10 mil or whatever but because we're just passively doing it and i haven't got to make one of those clips in a long time so i guess here's the clip of me charging up the staff a little bit we're up to 5600 charges beautiful whoa 
<laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Got the Onyx from Tecton. That is our second one of those, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, second Onyx. That's roughly about on drop rate. I'm pretty sure it's like a 1 in uh, 400 or something, I forget. But I literally would rather complete the raid more consistently with an extra brew than hold on to the 120k Alk that that thing would give me. So we're just going to leave it on the ground. But yeah, <laughs> that's a cool thing to see. I was not expecting that. 192kc, we just died to Ohm, so I'm a little annoyed. But that's all right. Runer is to flex. Okay. Uh, is that? Yep. That's uh, the the rare zero damage mama dial. Holy shit! That's a one down tecton. That's a one down tecton. This is the this is the best <laughs> fucking run we've ever had. We gotta try and get the speed run here, man. I have never done that in my life. That's crazy. All right, we kind of need to hit like one or two dragon warhammer specs on ice demon for this to work. There's one, and it looks like just one. No, <laughs> I got a little greedy. Okay, I'm still gonna try and get it though. And there's the time. Ohm still at like 75% HP on head phase. Now if we don't kill him in 14 seconds, we're literally gonna die to a poison damage tick. We got eight seconds to kill him. We got one HP and we're poisoned. We gotta risk it for this hit here. There it is, we got it. Okay, that was fucking annoying as hell. 195 KC, no purple. 40 minute raid. That head phase was extremely slow. That was like a fucking three minute head phase. I don't know what the hell just happened. But we got full reward potential, so that's you know, fine. Oh, man, <laughs> this is a little stressful. Or the Torstal and the Dark Relic. Someone dropped two gold rings on my stack of potatoes. So now if I want to pick up my potatoes, I literally have to right click each potato. So whoever you are, you I hope you're happy. Alrighty, friends, this is going to be 200kc at the challenge mode chambers of Zarek. That is a nice big milestone to end the video on. Can we end it on a bang? No bang, unfortunately, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so I guess with that, as always, guys, thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. Take care. Until next time, I love you. Bye. Massive shout out to the YouTube members at the Silver Tier. We've got Chester, Thornforge, Brendan, Christian, Toasty the Wizard, Daniel P, Benjamin H, Cookie Cake, Gangplank Main, Nihilism Rip, Trogothor, Chicken Noodles, Clump, Alfredo, JBT, Fruboy, V, and our newest member, Cope. For the gold tier, we've got Like a Wolf, Iaea, Misks, David Boone, Kill a Queen, Shockley Six, One with Everything Bagel, Robert, Obtainable Beer, MF, Unworn Tripod, Soapski, Big Dick 69, It Slits, Romalu Scorelot, and our newest member, Dubbing Till Death. And with that, cheers guys. See you in the next one.